Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We have our very first guest in the studio. Now, this young woman is a very achieved serial entrepreneur. She's an on air personality and media mogul. She's the CEO of Benabi Solutions, an event planner extraordinaire. And she's also an MC and a host. Today, she gets to be the guest. Usually, she gets to be the host, but today, she's our guest on Hello Nigeria. We'll be looking at <laughs> her life and basically explain what it means to give during the festive season. It's a pleasure and a delight to have you, Betiana. I'm you? so honored to be on this set. And it feels very weird, you know, being the guest this time around. And then you're rolling out accolades. I'm like, is that really me? Have I done that ah, much no, in I was life? giving the applause to you. <laughs> it's, that, it's, that, it's that soundtrack. You deserve some accolades. Yeah, yeah. You paid yeah, your dues. Yeah. Speaking about paying your dues, Betiana, let's get to know you. Let's get to understand your journey, where it all started from. You know, we know that you were the host of Talk Talk on Wazobia TV. Mm -hmm. You were... Uh, traffic reporter on Good Morning Nigeria show, but was that always the plan? Did you study journalism or broadcast? You know, lead us through your journey. How Actually, it all started. it's funny because um, I would say that was always God's plan. But then again, we as humans, we have a way of trying to divert, and eventually God's plan always wins. I started out as a sociologist. That's what I read in school because I just couldn't afford to deal with anything that had to do with maths. But jokes on me, I still had to do statistics from beginning of my um, university till my final year. But that aside, um, I always wanted to do something relating to media. My father felt it was irrelevant because he felt, you know, the media is inborn in you. Why not read something different so you can have a wider scope at life and everything? So I read sociology and I started off working with an event company, Okin Events. I worked there for a period of about two to three years. And I just wasn't fulfilled. It got to a point where I would go to the office and then I'm crying like, this is not saying, oh, I'm crying. Tears would roll down. That was like my daily routine. I would get to the office. I would cry for like 10 minutes. When people start coming, I'll go wash my face, do my makeup, and then we'll start the day's job. But I was never fulfilled. And then the opportunity came for me to work with Azubia TV. I'm like, yes, finally, I've gotten it. And it was a brilliant ride uh, while with Wazobia TV. I enjoyed myself, every bit of it. It shaped me, shaped my media experience. It was like the foundation of media for me. Everything that I know, I learned from here. So it feels good to be back here. Yes, it's good to have you again. Thank you very much. Now let's take you back to the very first day you had your li first live show. Hmm. How was it? The preparation, the nerves, you know, just let's see what Betiana, let's feel what Betiana felt that day. So the very first day, let me, let me go back to the very first audition I had. Um, I auditioned in this particular studio and there were a host of people in front of us and, you know, the MD was here, um, top people from the company were here and it's like, oh, you know, just come and do your thing. You have two minutes. Was it two minutes? Yeah, two minutes. And I'm thinking, I'm like, what am I going to do? I have to make them laugh. I have to, you know, you have to hit that punchline and they'll be like, oh, yes, this person has got it. I was nervous as you have no idea. Like, my, I could literally feel my heart in my hands and I'm like, what am I going to do? And I think I did something relating to Fela, something Fela did and I was like, oh, you know, um, now the more I talk, if you act crazy, now you savvy, something like that. And it was very funny. Everybody was laughing and I'm like, oh, dear. You're laughing, yes, God, I did it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was really nervous. My first show, I still have it on my laptop, the first uh, mock shoot we did for the traffic report. And every time I feel down, I just look at it and I'm like, oh, Bettina, you've grown, because it was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I think this is disaster. sort of an encouragement to people mm -hmm. who are looking to veer into media. You might not always get to the first day. I mean, when we had Ike Osaki Odiwa, he shared with us his journey that the first day, he literally played songs that was full of cursing, and he had to just, oh you know, God. it was a disaster, his first show. But who does not know Ike Osaki Odiwa on TV? So thank you for sharing that. Throughout. So now you are going to share your, um, okay, you are going to share your first experience with Talk Talk as well. Yes, my first experience with Talk Talk, can I even remember? So it was a shocker when I came to Wazobia because then um, they were about to put out Wazobia TV and Cool TV. And of course, you know, every girl likes to feel posh and it's like, I can't speak pigeon. So I came in like, oh, I'm coming in for Cool TV. And then people interviewing are like, oh, um, okay, we've heard you speak English. Why not do something in pigeon? And I'm looking at them like, you're joking, right? And it's like, no, speak pigeon. Now, I would like you to know that I had never spoken pidgin prior to that time. My father was a journalist, so pidgin was like a no-no in my house. If you speak pidgin, you can't speak vernacular, not even our language. We're brought up with English. So I did the pidgin bit of what I had already done. And you know, I stopped and they're like, no, why did you stop going? I'm like, no, you guys have to be joking. No, don't set me up. And they're like, we're putting you in Wazobia. 
I felt downcast. I'm like, why would you want to do that? Does that mean my English is not good enough? Does that mean I, I had a lot of questions burning in me, but I'm like, you know what? You know, let's go. I need a job anyway, and this is the media. I'll be happier here than where I am already. So I went with the flow. And I was speaking pigeon for about three years. And I tell you that three years, I would not take it back for anything. I've had people who have met me on the streets and the bus at events telling me, oh, you know what, um, your speaking pigeon has enabled me to contribute into shows that I never thought I would be able to. It's like bridging the gap between the elite and the non-elite. It has been an amazing experience. And till date, I have stopped the show for over a year. I still get messages in my inbox of people saying, oh, we haven't seen you. You've been so positive in our lives and we'd love you to come back. So I feel like I've done something right. And I'm really glad that I took up that opportunity. Okay, well, I'm going to ask, concerning you saying um, when you were first offered the job in the Pigeon Station, which is here, mm -hmm. that you felt absurd at first. Why? Yes, because it's... Um, uh, What's the word? Now, popularly, especially in a place like Lagos, a lot of people feel like, oh, once you speak pidgin, um, you know, you're local. But I was able to change that narrative because I saw it in a different light that pidgin doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean local. Now, everybody is not educated. There we have the people in the market who cannot speak English. We have people who didn't go to school. We have different classes of people that pidgin is like their lingua franca at the moment. That is what they understand. That is how they can communicate. And I've helped these people to be able to contribute into a wider scheme in life. We, um, when we were hosting the show Talk Talk, we had different um, topics that we engage in. And for those different topics, these people were able to contribute in their little way, in the way that they understand best. And what better way to contribute to society than helping Helping out. And besides, there are even people that are educated that speak mm. English very well, but would rather listen to a pigeon show. The caliber of guests mm -hmm. that you because have. Because most things that you say in pigeon comes out funnier than English. Exactly. Sure. And Not even the, those who have, you know, the IJGBs or mm -hmm. the, those who have gone abroad, <laughs> who are living abroad, it makes them feel closer to home. So we had a lot of. There's something about the IJGBs. It's like once they, once they come back, they want to do everything. Permit me to use the word local. Everything yes. raz. Because it's like they've been in such an organized system. It's like, you know what? Finally, I can be free to do it anyhow. So they want to they want to go on down for buses, they want to climb Bokada, they want to everything that we are trying to say, oh no, I'm posh. No, let me let me get an Uber. Let me, you know, they're like, no, I'm not doing that one. I want to go the local way and you know just go street and go the full long way. Okay, so I knew I know that your show talk talk, uh which I came on once yes. was, you know, a, a show that had this very broad spectrum. Basically most things involving people in society. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose that part? Why not the, just the normal entertainment, entertaining, music show kind of show? Because I know you actually built Talk Talk, yeah? Recently. Yes, I, I started, we're four, there were four of us who started Talk Talk, the Talk Talk show. And before they settled with the four of us, there were um, a list of people who were trying to lobby for the show. And for some reason, you know, the four of us just were able to build up the show and then it just stuck. Now for Talk Talk, Talk Talk was an all-encompassing show. And that's because it touched almost every area and aspect of life. We had health, we had entertainment, we had politics, we had um, life issues. Anything you could think about, we will discuss on Talk Talk because it's um, affecting lives generally. Okay. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, but Tiana, let's look at some of the challenges that you've been through, the most mm. challenging moments and how you've been able to handle them. Whilst working here as a TV presenter, you went through hell and came right out. In fact, I remember you lost your mother, which was your only surviving parent, whilst working. Mm -hmm. And it was her birthday two days ago, the 24th of December. It was. How have you been able to cope so far? And how were you able to deal with it at the point that it happened? Because you were still working. You were still doing your shows, even whilst you had just lost your mom. Okay, so um, I would like to point out at this point that if you, if you find yourself doing a job that you are passionate about, that you love, for every huddle in life, that job will become a solace to you. So I lost my mom in the year 2015. And, you know, she passed, she passed away on a Sunday. And then the following day was a Monday and we had to work. And so for some reason, news got around that, oh, you know, Bettina lost her mom. And, you know, people are trained in sympathies and all of that. And I really wasn't looking for that. I was looking for something to take my mind off the situation. So I took my bath that morning and I came to the studio. And they're looking at me like... Ah. Are you, are you all right? Like, you just lost your mom, go. But I left because they didn't understand. But my point is, nobody understood the fact that at that point, 
my work was what I needed the most. I needed to do something that would take my mind off what had just happened. And at the end of the day, no matter how much you love a person and the person passes away, life goes on. Now, I've been able to draw strength from the fact that um, during her time, alive, I was able to do all that I could as a child to a mother. It's, it, there were not things that, oh, I was procrastinating and saying, oh, you know what, I need money to do this, then I won't do this for mommy, I'll wait until next time. No. For every time that I had a, an opportunity to do, to do something for her, I made sure that I went all the way because I'm like, let me do this now. And I didn't know why I was doing it then. Maybe God was just, you know, leading me or something, but I didn't know any, I didn't have any reason why. I would have done it and sometimes I'd be like, oh God, now I'm broke. Well done, Bettina. But, you know, I had already done it and the smile on her face was always such a consolation for me like I always felt like I had done something right so it, it was tough uh, working here like I said earlier shaped me in ways that I, I in fact I have to say a big thank you to the MD and to Madame Tatiana thank you very much you guys have been awesome um, there were times where we had to run the show there was this particular time I was very sick and we we're recording talk talk and there was no other person to fill in for me. So what I would do, I had a bag and I, would, I was hosting the show. When we go on a break, I would throw up in the bag. I'll put it behind the seat and then we'll continue. And no one could even tell. So it's like when I go home, I'm like, did you guys watch my show? They're like, yes. Eh. I said, you wouldn't notice anything. I said, no, I'm like, wow. Do you know wow. that I'm sick? <laughs> that is the level, the height of professionalism. Yeah. Amazing. Well done, Bettina. Thank you. And we're so proud of all that you've done. Thank and you. And we're so grateful that you also had to give. You gave off yourself to your mom while she was alive, to your job, to your station, and even to your friend. Now, it's the season of giving, the spirit of giving. What would you say are some of the best ways, you know, we can go about with giving and impacting people's lives? Because we're a society that... we're. We're big on giving, but we're a little too skeptical because you're thinking, are they trying to scam me? Mm. You know, this man is begging me for money. If I give him, is he going to use it for the reason I'm giving him for? So what's your take on giving and how can we build an attitude or a habit of giving? Okay, first of all, I, I, I'm, I'm a big giver. I believe in giving. Now, most people in society do not know that you, when it comes to giving, the first thing that people's minds go to is money. That's not all there is to giving. And then I also like people to know that while you are giving, you're not giving because you want to get back. You're not giving because you want people to see that you're giving. You're giving because it just makes you happy. Now, you can give anything. It's not necessarily money. You could give your time. You could give your smile. You could give your love. You could give anything other than material gifts. There's this uh, um, man that I meet on the bridge every day when I'm going to work at Omole. He's crippled. Now, every day when I'm going to work, he makes the point of duty to smile at me. And he's like, ah, I'm fine, sister. And that smile, I tell you, even on the worst days, lifts my spirit. Because I see a man who has no legs, and he sweeps the bridge, and he still takes out time to smile at you going to work. I mean, that is the height of giving. So it's the season of giving when the spirit of giving, give anything and everything you have. Give your time. There are people that work in environments, they don't even know the cleaner's name, they don't know the gate man's name. Give out your attention. These people sometimes just need someone to talk to. All you have to do is, oh, Olive, how are you doing today? And before you know, you've started a counseling session because they are pouring their hearts out to you. They just want the opportunity for you to say, oh, how are you? And then you can now, you know, start a conversation. I mean, just be friendly with everyone, be giving to everyone. It's not all about money, really. Okay, well, I'm going to ask this question also. Um, should giving be publicized? Because I think it's an in thing these days where people want to hmm. give and they want it to be covered and let everybody know that, okay, yes, I'm giving. Yo, the whole world, see me, I'm giving. I, I don't know, but I want to find out from you. You know, should the last time I spoke way? about... Um, publicizing given a certain daddy blocked me on Instagram but I will speak about it regardless um, I I feel like people have different reasons for publicizing their given now some people might publicize it because um, um, they're trying to get other people to do the same thing like William Zuchamba and the giving challenge you understand uh, some people an another reason why people might publicize is because they're trying to get sponsors to key into what they're doing so it's like oh out of my widow's might i'm doing this so let me document this so that i can go to a wasobia tv and tell them oh this is what i'm doing i would like you to support me as well to help these people because we cannot do it all alone but when you now begin begin to think from your own myopic point of view and say oh they're publicizing because they want to make themselves famous then i feel like you are the one that has a problem hmm. Because okay. why not look at it from the positive light? Why must it be negative? 
Mm. All right. Batiana, we'll take all these things that you said. You know, you're speaking with so much wisdom, mm. you know, so much, you're dropping so much depth. And I'm, I'm really inspired by our conversation today. But before we let you go, we know that you're a multi talented young woman. Beyond being Glory a media mogul, you're also an event planner. Now, this is a season of events, and you have organized several events yourself this year from weddings to birthdays to bridal showers and baby showers. What would you say are some of the tips you would give to um, people who are celebrating when it comes to choosing the perfect event planner for your event? Oh, first of all, I must say that um, you need to connect emotionally with your event planner because eventually, especially for weddings, your event planner will become your counselor, your guardian, your go-to person, the person you will cry to in the middle of the night when your husband-to-be is frustrating you. So you guys have to connect um, on some level Oh, so of that emotion. happens sometimes? Oh, yes, oh, yes. it happens. <laughs> I can imagine. It happens. Trust me. I don't want to start. It happens a lot. <laughs> so that person. You also need to get someone who is on your side. So your event planner needs to understand that you are getting an event planner because you are trying to cut down costs. Now, so the event planner is like your manager that will tell you, Olive, I know you want an all-white wedding, but with your budget, you need to make it white and green. I'm just giving instances. Now, some event planners just, they're all in for the money. It's like, oh, uh, your budget is five million. Oh yeah, bring it now, we'll do it for you. But I will tell you, oh, your budget is five million, but you know, you can, if you do it this way, you can cut it down to three million. You can cut it down to 3.5. Because I know that there is life after weddings. There's life after birthdays, whatever you're celebrating, there's life after that. So you don't need to spend all that you have in trying to host an event. But if you decide that you want to, you know, go all out, trust me, I will bring your dream to life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Bettina and Willie, for thank sharing you. your story, your journey. Thank you for and it's been an inspiring Betty. one. We hope that you have an amazing end of the year. Oh, I intend and to. Happy New Year, Bettina. Happy New Year to Let you. Let me officially Happy be the first happy to say it to you. Thank you. But All you still have to tell me on the first. Okay, I will. Don't worry. I will. I will. <laughs> so we've been speaking with Better Now Unweli, who was a host on Talk Talk here on Wazobia TV, media mogul, media entrepreneur, the CEO of Benabi's Event Solution, an event planner par excellence, and an all-round baby girl. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.